Hi Ram students. Today we are going to learn civics third chapter. Rural local government bodies part 3. Before that let's take a short recap what we had learned in our previous session. We had learned women's participation in the gram sabha the source of revenue of the gram panchayat panchayat samiti the office bearers of the panchayat samiti the functions of the panchayat samiti and today we are going to learn jilla parishad every district has a jilla parishad at present the state of maharashtra has 36 districts but only 34 jilla parishads this means students every district has a jilla parishad and at present the state of amarashtra has 36 districts but only 34 jilla parishads because the reason is that mumbai city district and mumbai suburban district do not have a rural population therefore they do not have jilla parishads okay next the office bearers of the jilla parishad elections to the jilla parishad are held every 5 years the elected representatives choose a president and a vice president from among themselves so students the elected representatives choose a president and a vice president among themselves so elections to the jilla parishad are held every 5 years okay next the president of the jilla parishad presides over the meetings of the jilla parishad he exercises control over business conducted during the meetings he also controls the financial transactions of the jilla parishad this means students the president of the jilla parishad exercises control over business conducted during the meetings and he also controls the financial transactions of the jilla parishad and the president of the jilla parishad presides over the meetings of the jilla parishad okay now the next he has the authority to undertake appropriate expenditure from the jilla parishad's funds the vice president carries out this duties in the absence of the president so students the vice president carries out this duties in the absence of the president and the president has the authority to undertake appropriate expenditure from the jilla parishad's funds okay next the work of the jilla parishad the work of the jilla parishad is carried out through different committees the finance committee agriculture committee education committee health committee water management and sanitation committee etc so students the work of the jilla parishad is carried out through different committees they are the finance committee agriculture committee education committee health committee water management and sanitation committee etc okay now the next the women and child welfare committee takes up issues related to problems faced by women and children so students the women and child welfare committee takes up issues related to problems faced by women and children okay now the next chief executive officer the decisions taken by the jilla parishad are implemented by the chief executive officer of the jilla parishad 
he is appointed by the state government so students the chief executive officer is appointed by the state government and the decision taken by the jilla parishad are implemented by the chief executive officer of the jilla parishad okay so we are going to see now the functions of the jilla parishad first is education facilities you can see the picture so functions of the jilla parishad make provision for education okay next is health facilities so it provide health related facilities such as vaccination and maintain public health you can see in the picture okay now the next third is water supply so it make provision for water supply so you can see in the picture next fourth is provision of seeds it supply improved seeds and implements for development of agriculture okay so you can see in the picture next electricity it make provision of lighting streets and other public places okay so you can see the street lights next sixth one tree plantation in the village to protect environment by undertaking such activities as tree plantation in the village you can see in the picture now the next 73rd and 74th amendment act our constitution was amended in 1992 by the 73rd and 74th amendment act this amendments have granted a constitutional status to the rural and urban local government bodies so students the amendments have granted a constitutional status to the rural and urban local government bodies and our constitution was amended in 1992 by the 73rd and 74th amendment act okay next it has also given them more powers to develop their respective areas more efficiently the number of subjects under their jurisdiction were also increased so students the number of subjects under their jurisdiction were also increased and the amendment act has also given them more powers to develop their respective areas more efficiently okay in order to enable them to work effectively their sources of revenue have also been increased this means students their sources of revenue have also been increased in order to enable them to work effectively okay who can contest elections in order to get elected to the gram panchayat samiti and jilla parishad candidates must fulfill certain conditions of eligibility for example he she should be a citizen of india this means students in order to get elected to the gram panchayat samiti and jilla parishad candidates must fulfill certain conditions of eligibility for example first is he or she should be a citizen of india second he she should have completed 21 years of age third the person's name should be enrolled in the local 
voters list this conditions also apply to the urban local government bodies so students he or she should have completed 21 years of age then the person's name should be enrolled in the local voters list this condition also apply to the urban local government bodies okay so students this is chart of local government bodies rural okay so it is divided into three parts first is gram panchayat panchayat samiti jilla parishad okay now the total members of the local government bodies are in gram panchayat minimum 7 and maximum 17 members in panchayat samiti minimum 15 members and maximum 45 members in jilla parishad minimum 50 members and maximum 75 members okay now the next we are going to see is office bearers so in gram panchayat the sarpanch and the deputy sarpanch is the office bearers then in panchayat samiti chairman and deputy chairman is the office bearer in jilla parishad president and vice president are the office bearers now the next is officers of the local government bodies gram panchayat gram sevak is the officer then block development officer in panchayat samiti then the next chief executive officer in jilla parishad okay so students what we have learned today we have learned jilla parishad in jilla parishad we have learned the office bearers of the jilla parishad the work of the jilla parishad chief executive officer functions of the jilla parishad then 73rd and 74th amendment act who can contest elections and the last local government bodies rural okay now the next is activity fill in the blanks the blank is given with the three options you are going to choose the right option and fill in the blank okay first elections to the jilla parishad are held every dash first option 2 years second option 3 years third option 5 years and your answer is 5 years elections to the jilla parishad are held every 5 years okay now the second question is chief executive officer is appointed by the dash first option is state government second option president third option vice president and your answer is first option state government so the statement is chief executive officer is appointed by the state government okay that's all for today sai ram thank you